Yes. Okay, we're recording. Excellent. Um, so let's let's just just checking in. I don't have a lot of progress to report over the last week uh, or two. I've been um, merging patches from lots of people who have shown up in response to us getting publicity uh, from our job ad. Nice. Some of them. Some, some of them are people who have applied for the job. Some have, are uh, people who have not or have not as far as I can tell. So that's all good. I've been working on the open stuff for the circuit build timeout logic. Uh, less progress has been made there than I wanted. Um, I got the... I experimented with lots of mechanisms for notifying the circuit manager when directory stuff changes. And in the end, I just went... And I learned a lot, but it resulted in a very small amount of code. Okay. I wound up using uh, the broadcast channel type from the postage crate, if I recall correctly. Then, and now I'm working on persistent state for that. For that, I'm just using going to use Toml files on disk for now, although we might want to move to SQLite or something later on. It's, Is it the equivalent of the state file in, in C2? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, I'm a bit saddened by like the fact that our algorithms don't play nicely with the idea of having multiple processes stare, share a state file in the same way they do with multiple processes sharing a cache. But I think I can make something work there so that mm -hmm. like it isn't a complete blocker. It's just you know one leader, many observers. And the observers don't get to record state, but it's not does it make point. sense in uh, in this design to have that the um, let's say it's there's a Toml state file backend um, so that for example someone who is integrating uh, RD into their own system can plug in another uh, state file provider or, or state provider. Uh, if they, for example, want to serialize it to something yeah. else on the so I am making it abstract in this way and. Nice. Um, I want to support that down the road, but I'm also trying to resist. So I'm, I'm, so I'm hiding it behind a nice OO interface. But on the other hand, I am also, and, and I've, I've done the same thing with putting it behind an interface for um, storing directory cache data. But on, on the other hand, I, I try to resist the um, whole negative trend of like trying to fit a line to a single point. Yeah, that makes sense. And and, and doing like too much um, uh, pre premature decision making there. I, I know that at the very least we're going to need that for when we go to um, WebAssembly because in that environment yeah. we haven't got a file system. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Although for all, yeah, although for all I know they will add a file system to that before we get there. Hmm. Doesn't seem too likely, but. Awesome. Really cool. Well, I'd like to be making faster progress, but things keep coming up. I mean, right now there's also the hiring thing going on, right, which should ideally make all of RD go faster in the long run at the cost of mm -hmm. us being a little yeah. bit slower now. Yeah. I'm also trying to prioritize um, user and volunteer submitted patches and tickets a lot because, and like everybody else is ramping up. Awesome. Something I was thinking that, it, um, oh, so um, after that, I think my next step is to look for several small tickets to work on um, and to start on guards. Oh, cool. I found a set of cool algorithms for um, making the guard sampling a little bit faster. Not that they'll actually matter in practice, but it turns out that if you want to do a weighted sample without replacement, there are much more efficient approaches than the one that CTOR uses. What does without replacement mean? Is that a bit oh, like it means stable like, in order? Um, it, it means like if you've got like a thousand items and you're choosing a hundred with replacement, it's like, imagine that you've got balls in a bag, you pull out a ball, you note down which ball it was, and then you put it back in the bag. That, that's okay. the replacement. But without replacement is you take out a ball, then you take out another ball, then you take out a third ball. And 
you never so pick the, the same twice. get smaller and smaller. Yes, that right. makes sense. Right. I saw you had found some uh, some fancy algorithms for that. There was some conversation about them in, in Tor Dev. Yeah. They're not as zero copy as I would like, but I, I don't think that's actually going to matter in practice. No, no. At least not for quite some time. Awesome. How's it going with uh, you two? Are you, have you been able to look at any Rust lately? I know that David's been poking at isolation APIs. Yeah. Yeah, well, I've been uh, working last two days-ish at, uh, at this uh, isolation. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm tracking the approach to go from the, the expose API down downwards into the internals of RT for that, because uh, there's actually some sort of uh, tricky challenge on the API side and how do we expose things. Uh, but uh, mostly I've been experimenting. It's pretty. It's been pretty fun. Uh, but getting to so getting somewhere, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to show you something very soon. Sounds cool. Um, just so you know, I figure I have like thrown out roughly 50% of all of the code I've written so far for RD, especially towards the beginning. So yeah, trial and error, it's just to learn how writing Rust is and how, how to make it go well. Um, is is normal and to be expected and nothing to worry about. Yeah, no. yeah, I've, I've rewritten many things already. <laughs> I haven't had much chance to look at anything yet. Um, I was hoping to get uh, my hands dirty this week. I know that um, there are some sort of some project things that uh, you would like, like there is the website thing. I need to get that solved. Mm -hmm. And then there is also before I went away, we were talking a lot about having um, like a cover information when we're doing merge requests and things like that. And we had a, a nice tool for that, but there was some issue with GitLab CI and combining it with that because of uh, SecComp. Yeah. I was hoping to talk a bit with our sysadmins uh, on that, especially LavaMind, uh, because it seems like with the um, with Jim's project, they've now found a way to run more privileged things in GitLab CI. So I was hoping we could uh, we could get RD in on that as well. Nice. And then I was hoping to get back to uh, looking a bit at uh, my unsolved uh, bridge situation. Oh, this is for this. That would be for a sponsor or something else, or this is. It's uh, some patches I have lying from a hackathon we did in March, I think. That I have, oh, uh, oh, I'm yes, that would be cool. Yeah, they're just lying and waiting. And I'm a little bit worried because there's so many things happening in RD each time that uh, it would be sad to not get it in before it's uh, impossible to merge. Yeah, um, bridges are fairly far down the line in terms of our schedule, but nothing bad will happen yeah. if we merge some of the stuff beforehand. I saw that. Um, it is mostly a little bit of refactoring that is related to that, but I just want it away and then start looking at the list again and at what is uh, what is in the near future for us. Hmm. Oh, wow, there's a lot of things coming in from uh, from other people. Very cool. Yeah, right now I'm seeing um, just just I, I'm looking at the. Oh gosh, how do I? Can I? Ah, oh, here we go. I, I can paste it like this. I'm looking at this uh, URL, which is the stuff for RD001. Um, mm. A lot of the stuff that's currently assigned is assigned to me and. I don't. I don't think any of this is out, outlandish. Uh, looks like David, you've got two things. It's one fifty mm -hmm. for improvements to the circuit isolation code, and one fifty five for uh, requesting a circuit that supports exiting to some unspecified port. Yeah. Um, yep. I'm hoping to get that uh, that done. <laughs> and let's see the rest of this stuff. Looking at unstarted issues. Mm. A lot of the other, okay, other than guard nodes, 
lots of these are pretty small tasks. Mm. And that would be great because it would be great to spend some time polishing our APIs. Um, That's 140. Polishing our code, writing more tests. For property based testing, is that uh, the quick check crate you're thinking of there? Yeah, oh, there's be, already some conversation a, about that. Yeah, I think there's a quick check and a prop test crate. Um, yeah. the, um, the volunteer, um, uh, Robin, uh, yeah. Leander Schroeder has some opinions there about how to, um, about the interplay between fuzzing and property testing. I'm mm -hmm. not sure how much, I, I don't know. I'd like to get the, I, I'd also like to test. I'd also like to talk to people with more experience with property testing here, because he does seem to make a good argument that, like, whatever you do with property testing, you could do reasonably well with fuzzing. Hmm. I used to do a lot of property based testing in, in Erlang, and um, for the simple stuff, it's pretty easy to just do with fuzzing, but once you have complicated data types um, than the property-based testing, especially if it has um, the simplification step becomes a lot nicer if you have uh, good generators for the types. Um, I do have a question about uh, mild, the RT, the, the milestone, the basic anonymity milestone. Yeah. Um, so Alex and I have been a little bit talking since he came back uh, about this release management and CI on Tor.git, and since and it would be it would also make sense to to probably I'm sure, I don't know what the current status, but to have uh, good start with good practices uh, and Alex and I be involved into the release management of RT as as well. Um, uh, in terms of CI pipelines and so on and so forth. So I don't know what's your thought on uh, about that, Nick. Um, I am perfectly happy for you all to take over as much um, release engineering on CTOR as you want to, if that's the question. Uh, uh, CTOR, yes, but RT. Uh, that would be great, too. Um, I think the next time it comes to do releasing stuff, that we should do it together. Um, I only did the initial releases because... I wanted to placehold all of the, how yeah. to say, all, all the crates I could. And, yeah, lane spacing all. Yeah, and, and actually it turns out that we have one that we couldn't. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, somebody else has Tor client. I sent them an email about it. I haven't heard back. I'm going to wait a little while and, like... Ah, there's a ticket for that, I think. Is there yeah. a process for uh, for asking the crate? Yeah, so, the, yeah the, the process is email them and ask nicely. It's, it's first come, first serve. Okay. Except in like I, cases of like massive trademark violation, and this is not a trademark violation. Is um, I, I guess the goal for the for the first version of RD, we're just going to release with the cargo ecosystem, right? We're not going to think right. about how to do depths and all that kind of stuff. That's going to be on top of that in the end. Well, it would be nice to do binaries um, at some point and to start planning for that. So we should certainly be thinking about how we want to move in that direction. Okay. But um, it's not a blocker for 001. OK, good, because that's one of the things that, like, this is a bit related to the things David and I are going to have conversations about how to automate things. Like, we do some pretty smart things in CTOR with, for example, the changelog handling is, is pretty clever. If that is something we want to have something similar to in, in RD and stuff like that. That's all stuff we can uh, talk about at that point, though. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the, this kind of things I'll be be overlapping also. Like for instance, regenerating fallback there lists uh, needs to be both on RT and Tor .git side, and I, I really want that to be a CI pipeline, a pipeline. I mean, so uh, so yeah, I would, uh, it would be nice to have this meeting uh, sooner rather than later about all this, so we can figure it out. Yeah, that speaks for doing the thing we talked about the other day with when we generate the fallback uh, dear files, 
Correct. That we have that as a separate CI runner so that RD and Tor can fetch the artifacts generated from that. Correct. Yeah, and, that would be nice. And what's the, uh, so, so in Tor.git, we'll have, to, so we can automate a lot of things, but then we still have to manually sign the releases at the end. Uh, what's the, so, so with RT, uh, I'm guessing it's just a crate push. Would yeah. it be the release? Yeah. yeah. Um, I would need, yeah. Um, I think that there should still should be tag signing in Git. Yes. At least. Of course. And uh, the crate push has to be done manually, like uh, because uh, I'm guessing our CI doesn't have access anyway, and it's kind of scary for a CI to do. Mm. Yeah, I don't want our, our CI publishing for us. Or signing for us. Yeah, sounds uh, reasonable. Mm -hmm. When I look at the issue list, I can, I, it seems like there's a lot of things that are um, like somewhat related to sort of portability in general. Like there's some iOS, there's some um, making sure that things works on Android and on iOS out of the box. Um, and that's, I think that's right for me um, to, to dive into those. They're not, they don't seem to be too big and it's something we need to do. Um, I will probably dive into those as well. Oh, wow, there's there's a RT ticket with logos in it. Oh my god! Yes. So we have to pick a logo. <laughs> yeah, and I figure I figure that that one's uh, stalled till we get the website. But yeah, right now, I mean, I guess we could put it up like right where I got that little bowl full of red onions. Oh yeah, true. You have it on the uh, on the GitLab thing. I, sp I I have spent so much time photographing onions in the last few years. <laughs> nice. Mm. Oh, wow, Duncan cool just uh, went with us. Like walk through any code together, or um, anything like that. Maybe I always thought start. that was nice at our hackathons when there was the um, sort of show off how some component work, um, especially if it's an interesting component. Um, I always thought I learned something at least. Yeah, I'm good on my side. I've been uh, digging quite a bit in RT lately, so, uh, so it's it's uh, it's pretty good. And then after, I get blockers here and there, but it takes a few minutes to figure it out for now, so it's it's fine. Do we still want to do the hackathons? Like uh, that was something that was big a few months ago. That could be pretty fun. We could like invite a bunch of hmm. people. We've got more more people now. We might. Um, I think we should like plan one for September at some point. Mm -hmm. And then you're considering if we should invite the um, Zcash people? We, I, I think we should invite Zcash people. I think we should invite everybody who's like been submitting patches on GitHub, I mean, GitLab. Yeah. I think that sounds like a good idea. I've added that to my list. I don't remember what we had. Like we have, we have RD zero zero one. Like that is pretty well fleshed out. Um, the next one is the one called. Um, is it O one O? It's oh. Do you mean the one that's that's for October, or the one after that? Um, it, it doesn't have a. Um, it doesn't have a date in GitLab. There is one that's called June 23 to November 1st, which is uh, 001. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, there's uh, one called uh, 010. 010 is the next. 
Okay. Uh, we're going to put a date on it once we know a bit more. Okay, cool. Okay, awesome. I can see when the tickets, uh, what they're related to. Very nice. Didn't we have a ticket for, like, where we have something related to running RD in either Chutney or Shadow? I think we may. Um, Chutney currently outputs a its network configuration in a format that RD can use, but we just don't have all of the scripts tied together. It would be really good to have some integration testing yeah, that's the, ah, yeah, number 78. That's the integrating test RD in Chutney Network. That's for 010. Because I remember Jim and I was uh, having a conversation about uh, being able to do that soon, and, and Rob is a bit interested in that as well. I've had some conversations with Rob and Isa about potentially having Jim work a, a few days a week on, on more network team-like things. Um, and this is uh, one of the things he was a bit interested in. Okay, cool. I don't have any questions uh, for anything else. I think I got the answers for um, for what has happened and what uh, what is the next thing to do. And I have a good idea about what I can work on as well. That's very nice. Okay. Yeah, pretty good for me also. Then I guess we are done with this meeting. Um, let's hang on to the file until you figure out how to upload it to YouTube. I've got to write up a uh, report and send it out at some point. Please. So I'm going to click. With... I'm going to press stop recording now. Or pause recording. Sounds good. Um, See you all on IRC. Yeah, but how do I? Um... Uh, what, how do I get the file out? <laughs>